I'm about to flash this entire audience of people. We're not ready. So I'm screaming. I'm like, hey, help me. I'm dying. Hey, I'm going to lose my life. My name is Mark Fallout Royale. Fallout being the energy that I give while I'm dancing, also how I live my life. I've been dancing for 10 years plus now. I've been featured in commercials, music videos, I've done TV shows. I've been around the block. I'm Abby, I'm 29 years old. I am a professional dancer and choreographer. And I've been out here in LA dancing, living, working for five years now. And my name is Christina Moffatino, also known as Poofy. I am a background dancer and vocalist for music videos, stage shows, and just recently for a world tour. I was performing at the NAACP 100th anniversary. That would be a lot of prestigious African-American monumental people in one place to celebrate our prestigious African-American monumental event. So we were the opening performance for this number. I remember being backstage, all the craziness happening. And I remember looking out to the audience and it was like Oprah there, Maya Angelou was there when she was alive. I remember Al Sharpton, I remember seeing him. Just a lot of major people in the African-American community. And we were doing a step routine. We wore something simple. It was a black shirt, black pants, white tie, wardrobe, they gave me the pants. And of course, being a plus size dancer, they never have my size or they have something that fits, but don't fit, but looks good with walking, but don't work with dancing. And I remember she gave me the black pants. They fit my thighs real nice. It was really good for like, you know, going out to eat, not going on stage to perform. So I remember I told her, I said, girl, these are going to rip. No, they're not gonna rip. You got this, you'll be fine. They're gonna rip. No, you'll be fine. So I'm on stage front and center, you know, it's time to go down. The first eight counts, my pants rip right down the middle. I'm pretty sure you heard the split happen over the music. And I'm pretty sure I've seen people go like this and looking to the side. And this is back in 2010 when we didn't have those good compression underwear that we may have now. We'll just say things were hanging out left and right. And all I remember being on stage like, oh my God, they're recording this. Oh my God, Oprah sees my mini me. I'm pretty sure there was like one single tear coming down my eye as this was all happening. And I had the option of staying on stage or running off the stage. And you know, I've always been told the show must go on. So the show went on for a good seven minutes of me just hanging around until when we finished the performance, lights went out. I ran off the stage and I changed my clothes and I left. And it was on my birthday. So happy birthday to me. I had been in LA, I want to say about two years, and I got casted to dance in a music video and it was gonna be out in the desert. And I was just so excited. I have never been to the desert. I thought, this is great. I get to dance, I get to make money, and I get to go and see a new place that I've never seen before. So it's supposed to be an overnight shoot. So I believe that our call time was around three or four in the afternoon. They were gonna have us go into hair and makeup and then we were gonna shoot through the night. So I get there, I'm super excited. They give us these amazing monochrome black costumes, loads of accessories, really like gothic makeup. It was just such a fun experience and I was still so excited about the whole thing. They say, okay, you're gonna have a couple of hours before you shoot, you know, there's a, there's a snack table, we have food coming at, at dinner time. So we're just relaxing. I don't know anybody on this shoot, so I'm getting to know people and, you know, just having a good time. A couple of hours roll by, they're like, oh, we're, we're pushing back, we're having some technical difficulties. I'm like, it's okay, it's nice and warm outside. As the sun starts to set, these gigantic bugs appear as if from nowhere. It was like they were cock Approaches, but times them by three and then they could also fly and hop. I'm not typically scared of bugs, but having these gigantic creatures hopping around whilst we're trying to just relax and eat was not the most fun start to the night. The directors keep telling us, you know, a couple of hours, we'll be ready, 30 minutes. They even kept telling us, get ready, we're gonna shoot soon. So everyone's touching up makeup, trying to stay awake, trying to stay energized. The hours just start rolling by. It hits 10 p.m. It hits midnight, it hits 2 a.m. and we're still doing absolutely nothing in the pitch black in the middle of the desert. They were coming in to, to check on us and to tell us that we would be shooting nearly every hour. So by the fifth or sixth time they came over to us, you just have rows of people slumped over these tables with coffee, just looking at them like, we don't believe you anymore. Then it hits 6 a.m. and the sun is starting to come up. They tell us everything's ready to go. So we think, okay, great. 
finally we get to actually shoot. The directors were definitely being a little pushy with their, come on guys, like energy, like we need to project more energy. And uh, there were definitely some eye rolls from the people behind me and me. We go to shoot the first scene because we've gone into so much overtime with the rules of the amount of hours that we allowed to work, we have to cut and we all have to go home. The few takes that we did do, we did deliver as best as we as we possibly could. So they cut us, we get sent home, and then we get called back the next day. I had already signed a contract for a different job, so I'd already made another commitment, so I never even got to shoot the, uh, the rest of the video. I did see the music video when it ended up coming out. It looked fantastic, but they used all of about 2.5 seconds from that 18 hour night that we spent in the desert. I was dancing for this hip hop artist. Towards the beginning of this tour, we're about three or four shows in, going into our fourth show. We were traveling from here in LA all the way to the Bay Area for the show. We had to be at the choreographer's house by 9 a.m., which means I had to be up by eight in order to get ready and make sure that I was getting there on time. All of the communication for the tour was between the choreographer and the artist manager, and we received no information as to how we were getting picked up or when we were getting picked up. This has been something that had been ongoing for almost the whole tour and almost the whole time that we've been working with this hip hop artist. Come to find out, we're getting picked up around 12, which just irritates all of us because we all know that we don't like getting up early for no reason. 12 o'clock turns into 1.30. 1.30 turns into two o'clock, only to get a phone call to be like, hey, we're gonna have you guys be flown to the Bay Area for your show. And we were like, what? We're not ready. Three of us had only suitcases that were meant for cars, not for flying, which means that we have to change our luggage around because of weight restrictions. I borrowed a bag from the choreographer. I had to pull out my costumes, my change of clothes, my makeup, my foam roller, only for us to get another call like an hour later saying, hey, you guys are gonna get picked up by car. I was so irritated at this point. I just moved all my stuff into the bag and was just like waiting for them to pick us up. Typically, your shows for big uh, touring artists are gonna start about like 7, 7.30, which means like sound check should be about 5 p.m. So we already knew going into that that we were gonna be late for that. We get picked up by like 3.30. 30 minutes into the ride, we get a call and say, hey, the show is canceled. We were so disappointed, upset, irritated, just all of the above, just knowing that we wasted our entire day. What was more disappointing than not being able to perform was the lack of professionalism from the artist himself, because we found out later that he lost his voice. He was shooting a music video, and he was up till wee hours of the night, into the morning, drinking, partying, and just not taking care of his voice. And he completely lost his voice, which is why they had to cancel the show. This is a very great point for dancers. Always keep it in your contract that no matter what the circumstances, that you will get paid for that show, which luckily we did, but there's nothing worse than getting ready, wasting your whole day waiting to get picked up, only to be disappointed by the fact that you're not gonna perform. Recently, I've been working on a cruise ship as a dancer in a disco show. I've been dancing on this cruise ship for about a year now. Very fun, very energetic. It has acro, it has lots of colors, it has people doing balancing and things of that sort. So my role is called the greatest dancer. Very fun, energetic, no one ever expects it because they always think that people can't dance. It's always something that just is not expected. So at the end of the show, I have to wear this cape. It's a big golden black cape that we shake around while we do last dance, last dance. Vocals. I have to walk from the front of the stage to the back of the stage. And in the back of the stage, you have to go up some stairs. I am short. I am the only short person that they have doing this role. A lot of people who play this role are about six feet, six two, six three. I'm a good five five, five six on a good day. So I have to adjust the cape to match, you know, so I don't die. On this particular day, I guess I didn't grab it correctly because there was a lot of cape left. I slipped over it and fell onto the stair. And it's not just one of those trips where you could just do a little quick and get back up. I trip over the cape. I try to catch myself going up the stairs. And in the midst of me trying to catch myself, my hand slips again on the cape and I roll down the stairs. And this is in the middle of the performance. So I had two options, one just cry and two just figure it out. I laid on the stage for the rest of the performance in that same place where I fell and just shimmy 
the whole time. Everybody was loving it because they're like, we don't know if this is part of the performance or this was part of whatever, but everybody on stage who was in the show with me knew absolutely what happened. Everybody broke character, it was over. Everyone was laughing, cracking up, we doing bows are cracking up. I don't know if it was laughing of concern or laughing to see me rolling down the stage with this pink sequin two-piece cape situation going on. And when lights went out, I still sat there. It was embarrassing. I was doing a really big performance and there was a large amount of people on stage. We were doing a Moulin Rouge themed dance. We all have these beautiful handmade corsets made for us. They're just stunning. They had like all the lace, no bras were able to be worn with this corset and they attached from the back. It wasn't tied and it wasn't sewn together. It was just two metal clasps that kind of linked together at the back. We also have these like really big flowy skirts and we had these uh, like character shoes on underneath. So the costumes were just absolutely fantastic. And because the corsets were quite tight, whenever we did a rehearsal, everything was absolutely fine and the corsets held together. So we're on stage and the performance starts and everything is going great. And there's a part where we go into two circles. So there's an inner circle of girls and then there's an outer circle of girls. And I am on the inner circle of girls. I just suddenly feel air. I just feel air and I'm thinking, oh my God. And I look down in the small amount of time that I had and my corset has popped open from the back. Now, luckily because I had like a little halter situation going on, it wasn't fully off, but it was definitely flapping from the back. I just want to die at this point. But luckily I'm still on the inner circle. But what happens is the two circles are about to peel open to reveal each other to go into two lines. So I think, this is it. I'm about to flash this entire audience of people. As we're about to move out and my head is kind of processing what am I supposed to do, I feel two hands grab my back. And I realize that the girl behind me has grabbed my corset and is holding it and is still doing the dance behind me. So we basically do about eight counts. We were changing formation so much that the specific formation we were in, I was gonna be on the side anyway. I'm able to exit without kind of making the dance look completely off sync. All the stagehands, all the technical people on the side were just looking at me. So they were just gawking as I'm frantically trying to rehook this costume so I could get back on stage and not ruin the entire dance. I managed to get it hooked on and actually managed to do the rest of the performance without anybody even noticing that it happened, except for all the girls behind me who looked like they're about to die in a fit of laughter. I gave the girl the biggest hug I have ever given anybody after a performance. I was shooting a music video in Barbados, and this time I was brought on as a choreographer for the music video. Fun fact, we were actually shooting this video on the block that Rihanna grew up on in Barbados. So we're on this block, it's pitch black. All you can really see is the lights from the houses, and the lights that we had to shoot the video of the dancers. So anything outside of that, you can't see. So when I'm choreographing anything, I'm very excited. I'm like, yes, bitch. go off the other thing. I'm just really loud, I'm excited. I'm behind the videographer and I'm giving direction as they're dancing, you know, getting them excited and everything. In Barbados, they have these streets and they also have sewage in these streets. Now in New York, you know how they have these crates that cover the sewage, so that way you can walk over the crates. Barbados has seemed to forgot about these crates. So they have street, sidewalk, hole. And in this hole, it's sewage. There's nothing covering it. And I guess if you're not from there, then you don't know that it's there. So I'm backing up, I'm backing up, I'm backing up. And I swear, it looked like it was like a cartoon where you just, you're in midair for a second and then you just fall down. I'm pretty sure that's exactly what happened. When I fell, I had my phone in my hand just like this, and I was able to grab the side of the wall. My hand had, must have turned into like Spider-Man's hand because it was on the wall, and I'm literally holding myself up, and I feel one of my feet in the sewer water, and I felt the most disgusting things. And the music is so loud that no one hears me screaming that I'm in this sewer. So I'm screaming, I'm like, hey, help me, I'm dying. Hey, I'm going to lose my life. And I gotta be honest, it felt like I was holding myself up for a good hour or maybe a day, but it was really probably just like three minutes. But three minutes when you're about to lose your life feels like an eternity. As soon as the music goes off, I'm like, hello, help me. So everybody hear me screaming and they ran over and put the lights on me and pulled me out. I almost lost my life and my poor phone which I actually still have from the situation, cracked really bad. And I ended up having to throw away my sneakers. And then I had to do a serious foot scrub situation because my foot 
felt things and saw things that it never deserved to see. It was very scary, very embarrassing situation, but I guess that comes with the job.